WP Central Podcast 133 for December 15th, 2011. Live from New York and London this time, and every time, hey. it's the WC, <laughs> WP Central Podcast, and obviously I can't talk today. It's been a very long night. Uh, how are you doing, Jay? Hey, good evening. How are you doing? Yeah, I just asked you. You can't ask me back oh, a question. Sorry, I thought you said good evening. You broke up a little. <laughs> I've got dodgy internet connection tonight. Um, yeah, I'm doing all right. As I say, I've uh, just been to a bit of a, a late thing at work, and as a result, I'm now uh, having a chance to change out of my suit and just got about as far as writing a script and eating a pizza and being three beers in, and it's it's, it's a pretty good night so far. How I'm about you? I'm just trying to caffeinate myself to wake up, so uh, <laughs> that's why I'm drinking my coffee, Yes, I do this but so what I'm we're saying right. is that uh, one of us is sleepy and one of us is a little bit drunk yeah yeah so that's sounds about right it's gonna go uh, well usually i'm a combo of both those but today just one so that's good for the <laughs> audience hopefully I'll, I'll be slightly more articulate this week no guarantees anyways let's hop into it as usual we tend to go over uh an hour on our podcast so let's just hop into it now so we can hopefully maybe prevent that uh the top of the news uh, let's, just, let's just embrace 7, it and accept the fact it takes us an hour Right, right, exactly. Uh, and so last night, T-Mobile had their launch event for the Nokia Lumia 710 uh, here in New York City, and I was able to go to that, and it was kind of a fun event. This is a, you know, we've kind of known about this phone coming to T-Mobile now for, I would say, probably at least, you know, six to eight weeks. It's been rumored, and it was kind of confirmed last week, and last night, of course, it was revealed. The uh, mm. phone goes for 49 bucks on contract, and it's actually mail and rebate so but i'm sure once wirefly and amazon wireless get a hold of it it'll probably go for free on those services and so the phone features 1.4 gigahertz processor eight gigs of memory and let's see a 3.7 inch uh you know clear black lcd screen overall it's actually a really nice device now i know a lot of people in our audience are going to be kind of yawning and doing their t-mobile hates us thing but um <laughs> You know, I'm going to take the position, for one, it's actually a really nice phone, and two, people need to understand that the smartphone market isn't all about high-end phones. I know that's kind of hard to believe, but people need to, there's a, we need, people need to separate the idea that, you know, what they want and versus what the market wants. And while the market, fortunately, doesn't want to pay $200 for a um, top-of-the-line phone, yeah. not to mention they, they don't even understand what makes it a top-of-the-line phone. They just want something that looks nice, is cheap, and you know, if they're going to go from a non-flip phone to a smartphone, they want something that's accessible. I think this phone fits that bill nicely, and so I think it's a really good release. Nokia is behind this. There's going to be a lot of advertisements for it, and you know, I, I don't know. I think it's a really good thing for the platform. I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah, and you- so I'm actually quite curious because obviously you had a chance to get your uh, get your hand, New York hands on this phone, uh, and you can tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about how you found it, how you found the phone in general. Um, I'm particularly keen to know what you thought of the physical uh, buttons as opposed to capacitive ones. Yeah, actually, I really like the physical buttons. I think it's probably one of the best selling points, and it makes this phone extremely attractive. Uh, it's nice. It's the only Windows phone right now that has these full capacitive buttons on board, and so that I think is. I think would make a lot of people happy, and they feel really nice. The phone doesn't feel cheap. I know some people are worried because it's plastic. It is a different feel than, say, the HTC Radar, which is, you know, has a lot of metal, the Unibi design. There's no argument there. I don't think it's better or worse. I think it's personal preference. What makes a little me a nice... Hmm? Yes, it's interesting. I think it's, as you say, we we haven't had a chance to see any of the colored ones yet. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a biased person. I went for a colored one in the end. But actually, I do quite like the white on this. I didn't like the white on the radar. I like the white on the 710. It it just, it, it looks quite pristine, quite clean. I don't know if that's just what I'm looking for right now in the phone. But uh, I'm quite impressed by the design. And that and that screen, tell me I'm wrong, but this looks an awful lot like it can match up to the radar and the Titan that we're seeing lately. Oh, yeah. No, the screen is fantastic. Uh, the screen is right there with the 800 screen. I mean, it's the same technology behind it, right? It's a super black mm-hmm. with a, a slight polarizing effect behind it. So it's actually really easy to view in uh, bright lights and has low reflection. I, I would definitely one of the top screens out there. I mean, there's just no argument about it. It's got a 5 megapixel camera with wide aperture. It's a, it's a solid phone. I mean, and what's cool is so it comes in white and black, which is nice. It has the two color uh, tones. And, like, you know, like you, I know, like, I really like the white. I think it looks fantastic. I think Windows Phone looks mm. beautiful in white. I love the radar design with the white. But this is nice because you can get it in black. And, of course, you have the interchangeable back plates on it, give you different color options, 
which I also think is really good. I mean, it's what people actually really want. And I think this is, once again, this is good for everyone in phone ecosystem. Just to have Nokia on board is good, of course, with their advertising yeah. and the word of mouth they've been getting. But this is a great phone. And this whole idea that I know, like, once again, a lot of people in our audience, they want this 900 phone, which I'm still not even convinced is real. But um, <laughs> I know they want top of the line. And that's fine. Like, you know, I'm not going to try to sway people from wanting 16 or 32 gigs of memory. That's totally legitimate. But yeah, for the mass legit. market out there, I think what Nokia is doing and aiming for with this in the radar is actually smart. I think this is what a lot of people want. Yeah. I know a lot of people that actually don't have smartphones and see no hmm. need for them. Until you give them one and then they start using it, then all of a sudden, they, of course, they really like it. But they need that entry point. And you're not going to get them from going from $0 to $200 phone. You're not going to do that. So you need something to get people uh, started. So. No, I think you're quite right. And actually, let's talk about, again, let's go back to the phone. We think that despite the fact that it's an LCD screen, uh, the, this clear back technology is really working out well for it. It looks just as good as the AMOLED in a way. Um, we think that I actually quite like that idea of physical buttons because capacitive ones can be frustrating. Um, I think the only reason that I can see not to buy this phone right now, with the exception of the front-facing camera, for those of you who care about it, is the storage size. So we know that this phone's going to eventually get uh, some kind of internet sharing. Nokia have made promises around that area. Um, the only thing which we know you won't ever get is the gyroscope, the front-facing camera, and the storage size. And actually, the front-facing camera you can live without, the gyroscope you can live without, the storage size... You know, if you if you decide you want a 16 gig phone, that's absolutely fair. It's one of the my favourite things about my new Lumia. Um, so, if you're considering getting into the smartphone market, or you know people who are, this is I think I completely agree with you, Daniel. This is the phone to show them and say, hey, this is a really good experience. It's a cheap phone. It's a beautifully designed phone. Give it a try. Yeah, the front-facing camera totally. <laughs> I understand some people really want it, and for them, uh, when you search, you know shopping for a phone. Definitely go for the one with a front-facing camera. Go for the radar. No argument. As someone who has front-facing camera on all their phones right now, I've never used it. I've yeah. used it to try Tango, but I've never actually used it to call someone with it. I just haven't needed but it. You, you're not a big it. fan of video in general, are you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and so, like, you know, I understand some people are like, oh, it's so sad it doesn't have front-facing camera. But like I said, I think it's a little bit overrated to, you know, have a front-facing camera. So I'm not really too mm. hurt by that. Uh, I just want to do show off one souvenir that I got <laughs> from the event. event. Yeah, let's see. Hopefully people can see this. What have you got? For those who can't see, what have you got? Oh, he's gone <laughs> off. <laughs> can, can you see it? Uh, I could, just for those of us who can't see it, for those of us who are listening on the podcast, okay. what, can, what right. have you got? This is <laughs> it's a pillow with the silk screen <laughs> Lumia 710 on board. Um, it's kind of nice. I don't know. Uh, is it? Yeah, would you sleep on it? I, I will be sleeping on it. My, I'm my goal is I'm going, nothing they else have to ask these about a pillow. Of, they have these at a lot of the events. These like pillows because they have like the couches and they'll have like the just like kind of pillows everywhere with the logos and stuff. And so uh, I remember seeing one years ago with the HD2 at the T-Mobile event, and now. Uh, now I got one of my own. I'm gonna start collecting these. I think eventually my couch will be filled up with these <laughs> white little head pillows. <laughs> so, anyways, that's just my love. Uh, so, now. tell us more about the event. We've talked about the phone. Let's talk about the event a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, so the event was great. Uh, I mean, it was it was well attended. It was it was an interesting part of New York. It was in Soho. It was <laughs> a fan to get to. But uh, no, it was great. Uh, it was actually kind of a weird event only because they didn't actually have a lot of the phones. They didn't have any out on display. You couldn't just go play with them. So if you knew people you know, at Nokia and you, know, you could go talk to them, you could get a look at the phone. But it was they didn't have any on display. They usually do have like a little section with them. You can go play with them. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was a little different. But it was a, it was a good event. I mean, Nokia and T-Mobile always throw you know, really good parties. Um, and had like you know fun photo stuff, little games and food and everything. So these events are are always you know fun to go to. Uh, I have mm. no complaints about attending these. Now, someone pointed out in the chat room here about CES and Nokia. There, uh, I can yes. confirm that they will be there and be there in force. We're told that, yeah, I expect a large presence from them and Microsoft. So, yeah, expect some announcements there. Uh, yeah. I'm still betting here. You know. Probably a Lumia 800 for AT&T, you know, possibly with LTE on board. And they'll so announce for some it. Time, for some time now, our chat room has been asking about uh, the CES presence and what Microsoft will be doing. And I think, I think it's safe for us to say that actually Microsoft's not the ones to watch for at CES. It is going to be Nokia. 
I think, as we've said, as you quite rightly said, Nokia are going to be there in force. We're going to get an awful lot from Nokia. In terms of what Microsoft might show off, I'm not expecting too much. <coughs> it just almost choked my coffee. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Is it so uh, shocking yeah. that you just almost died? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, so I think at Mobile World Congress in February, at the end of February, beginning of March, that's when we'll see talk of Tango. So mm-hmm. I think that'll be Microsoft's sort of big uh, you know, play. But I expect from uh, you know, Nokia a big push at CES. So we'll have to see what happens there. But that should be uh, the situation. Uh, will, of course, I'll be at CES all week. I know, poor me. I get to go to Vegas Electronic oh, Show. Make it sound terrible. <laughs> it is my first time. I'm kind of excited about it. But Vegas in January, yeah. I'm kind of I'm actually kind of excited about. But we'll be there with all the coverage. And so whatever Nokia has, we'll be there to, to see it. We already have um, everything set up with them. So it should be uh, a really good event. Of course, we have Mobile World Congress, too. So that do should re- be fun. Do you reckon you can get a British friend to pass? We'll see. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, oh, you mean Rich? Oh, yeah, we, we might be able to get Rich going if you. Yeah, want. you can get Rich in. Yeah, Rich can go again, not Jay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to quickly address uh, Polly Cromens in the uh, in the chat room. Yes, I'm looking very formal today. I haven't had time to change out my work clothes, and I'm also proving Daniel wrong about his comment about suits last week. So here I am in a suit and still technical. There you go. <laughs> um, um, Let's move on news-wise. Uh, we've got an interesting one to talk about this week. Uh, it was Verizon drawing a line in the sand with Microsoft. Now, we briefly touched on this at the end of last week's podcast, but um, I was hoping that you could tell us a little bit more about this whole Verizon deal. And for those who have been questioning us quite frequently in the podcast about what's Verizon doing and what Sprint are doing, in fact, but moving to Verizon just for now, um, it seems that what Microsoft, uh, sorry, what Verizon is saying to Microsoft is that when we have full LTE support, uh, on the CDMA network will be interested. If I've understood that wrong, tell me now. Uh, but it looks like yeah. Verizon are saying we want these 4G speeds or no phones at all. Yeah, I think they have between 11 and 14 Android phones on their network mm. that are LTE enabled. Now, LTE is nice, don't get me wrong. It's actually really fast. And if you got a connection to it, it's the, it's the real thing. It's a, it's a really fast. It's still technically not 4G, I think, Real 4G has now been agreed upon. I think it's LTE plus, LTE plus. No. But I mean, that's not too. LTE is a huge, huge upgrade in terms of speed. Whether or not that translates into real world amazingness on the phone, it depends really what you do with the phone, right? If you're if you insist on downloading a video podcast on the go, <laughs> it's going to be great. If on the other hand you're checking email, maybe just going to a website or using our app. It's not that big of a deal. And so the problem with Microsoft was that they were waiting for the second generation Qualcomm chips to come out for LTE support, which ensure better battery life. Because anyone who's used like a, the Evo 4G, one of the first you know, 4G devices with WiMAX on board, knows it, I mean, these things, even, and LTE does the same thing. It really sucks down battery life. Now, mm. any Android phone that uses LTE right now, the battery life is atrocious. That's just the thing, which is why you have to consciously manage LTE on those devices. Now, Windows See? Phone is nice because even with our Wi-Fi, we don't actively manage it. You can leave it on, and it'll, it won't kill the battery, which is nice. You no, just get because it goes to sleep. Tape. Yeah, and so... That's, you know, Microsoft's refining a bit. One, they're waiting for the newer chipsets, which are now out. And so that's why it's moving forward, I believe. Mm. And two, they, it'll be interesting to see how Microsoft actually uses LTE. You know, or is it going to, you know, what are the power saving methods behind it? But yeah. because of this, Verizon has basically said, we're not interested in, in Windows Phone until we can get the, that service on board. And that's because Verizon has a real vested interest in pushing people to 4G because once you get onto that, you have to pay for it, right? It's a bump in the carrier <laughs> stuff. And that's what this is really about. It's about money. And so they want to push all their customers to this. And as some people said... I think this is terrible. Yeah. It's 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 an opinion piece, but if Verizon are saying, okay, you can only... We we only accept this sort of technology. But Microsoft's saying, actually, can we remember that these phones run on batteries? And actually, batteries are really bloody important when it comes to your phone. There's nothing more frustrating than your smartphone that you think, yeah, this is all really awesome and I'm relying on this for my mapping technology and bam, it's out of battery and it's all gone. And I think, I think for Verizon to sort of say, sorry, we're not going to stock any of these phones until we have 4G available is, it, as you say, it's about money, but it, it just seems like it's really anti-consumer. Yeah, uh, you know, Verizon is about pushing this on to consumers getting the money, whether or not... And someone, I think, pointed out in one of the comments somewhere, um, 
the carriers are more interested in 4G than customers are. I mean, customers enjoy it, but it's not absolute for it's them. It's not essential. And it's, kind of, and it's weird, too, because the iPhone obviously doesn't have LTE support, but right. it's the iPhone, so I guess they give it a pass. But um, Well, it makes them too much money, again, going back to the point. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a weird position. I think it's even more weird, too, because I expect, obviously, Microsoft to support LTE and something. You know, we expect Nokia to come out on mm-hmm. Verizon. So, I mean, it seems like all this is in talks and discussion right now. So I don't even know why they're saying this publicly, which to me comes across, once again, it's kind of Verizon being scummy. It, it, you know, mm-hmm. you don't air your dirty laundry out in public. Uh, I mean, I guess it's nice now that people have an answer why Verizon isn't so uh, keen on Windows Phone, but it's still just kind mm-hmm. of, I'm sure people at Microsoft are probably rolling their eyes at this saying like, but we're working with you on this. We have devices coming out. What's, you know, why do you have to go publicly? You know, so I don't yeah. think Microsoft has a um, a great partner in Verizon, which is fine because to me Verizon is still I, they're one of the largest carriers, obviously. But uh, you know, not your favorite. Fine. No, definitely <laughs> not. It's kind of like when Motorola goes, "We have no plans for Windows Phone Seven. We're happy with Android." Meanwhile, their stock is plummeting. It's like, good luck with that. You know, so we don't mm-hmm. really need you either. So, but <laughs> hopefully, this will but change. Before- it's, hmm? I so said before we make this too personal, <laughs> to right. talk about the carriers, um, we should obviously point out. I think we should maybe move on <laughs> because I feel a rant coming on from you regarding which carrier is the right one, and I'm guessing. Yeah, it's probably I actually, the well, I use three of the four, so <laughs> my, my my position is three of those four are better than Verizon. <laughs> there we That's go. My- and okay, so let's move on a little bit. Um, let's talk about sort of the biggest software news this this week, I think, um, and that is the uh, Xbox Companion app, and in fact the Xbox Live uh, update. Uh, so we'll very quickly summarise for those of you who've got an Xbox. I've noticed that it just got a little bit more Metro tirely, uh, and it's a great little update, as you say. You've had it for some time. I just got it personally. I like it. I wish there was more features in the UK. Half of the cool stuff that exists in the US doesn't exist for sure. Um, but what we do have to go along with it is a little companion app for our Windows Phone. Um, what are your thoughts on the companion app, Daniel? It's amazing. It's, you know, it, it's a version one, and so you can give them wiggle room for improvements. And I, I think there are a ton of things you can add to it, but I don't want to come mm. off as being a jerk because I never, you know, version one stuff, you got to give it a little leeway. But I am really <laughs> impressed by this app because it's, it could have come across as like a gimmick, right? You know, the first mm-hmm. Xbox integration, uh, you don't really need it. It's kind of cool, but how often are you going to use it? Like a front-facing camera, for instance, which I still <laughs> find gimmicky. Uh, In this your is actually valuable, whereas, you know, when I'm using my Xbox, I turn this on, I can pull down information by the show, and it's seamless. It's really fast, which is one of the reasons why I think it's so good. It, there's no lag between it. I like the idea of being able to control the Xbox. Uh, I can turn on all my Windows phones, and we can, I can have like five remotes going for it, which is kind of fun. You can do that. Uh, mm. And so it, it's really nice for finding shows, looking up information, and just interacting with your Xbox in general. I think it's a really good selling point. I'm very impressed by it. It, it feels yeah. solid. It doesn't feel rushed. It, it's like they took their time. you know. And I'm excited about seeing how they develop it. Like What I really want to see for it is the ability to favorite shows and you know, pin them into the menu. So I could just, yeah, quickly... I can't see any of that. So I can't tell you anything good about it. <laughs> yeah. And, and oh, well, you don't think that's a good idea? We'd, uh, we'd have the TV. No, we'd have the TV stuff. So none of it exists. Oh, All I have oh, is the movies, okay. the music, and the uh, oh. control. Oh, yeah. So, like, for like Hulu Plus, I'd love to be able to just pin my show to a start screen so I could just tap it, watch it to the latest mm. episode. Stuff like that, I think, is really cool. Um, and I would hope that they, they're working on that. I can't imagine they're not. So, but uh, no, I think it's really great technology, and I think it's a big selling point. Hopefully, they'll keep it exclusive to Windows Phone now. Oh, and <laughs> actually, I should probably point out, just go to our chat and quickly, Renee's pointing out that uh, it's the same deal in Canada that they don't have the TV information. But actually, more importantly, uh, I didn't realize uh, the Wii Bear has just told me that uh, BBC iPlayer here and uh, Channel 4 and 5 will also be coming to uh, the Xbox dashboard, which I didn't know. Uh, so thanks for the news there, Wii Bear. Um, so that's actually that's very good news that actually they are getting serious about the TV integration all around the globe. Um, right. So my thoughts on it, I had a little play with it a couple of days ago. I used it to get to stream a movie and to uh, watch something. I think it was last Friday. Man, that week's flown past. Um, 
and t- do you know what? I thought it was fantastic. I love how well it's integrated. I love the fact that I can just do it and everything seems to work really nicely and it doesn't really matter what network I'm connected to. It works over 3G, it works over Wi-Fi, it's not a problem. Um, I thought I, I kind of, the only bit I don't like about it, and this is bizarre, is the actual controller that pops up at times so that you can actually integrate and sort of... Sorry, it's a little bland it's looking, right? It's, it, it's yeah, little... that's the only thing. It just yeah. needs to be a little bit nicer. It just needs to not have the buttons on it for some reason. It needs to have yeah, some they, dedicated thing which tells you what that button's going to do. That, and it, it's nitpicky, but everything else is so well done. that, that It's just a tough position. Really I was thinking the same thing. As far as UI design, it's tough. They can't... If this was Android, they would have just simulated the Xbox <laughs> controller, right? It would have been this, like, 3D render of your controller on there. Mm. It would have been kind of, like, cool but cheesy at the same time. So, obviously, they had to stick to their Metro principles, which was minimalism. And, yeah. But they also want to have the similar it's, Xbox buttons, it's, so it's it's not that's not minimalism anymore. I don't. It just doesn't. It doesn't look right, and I, it's it's really stupid for me to nitpick it then because it, if it was a small part of the app, if it was like a screen that you went into to set something up, I can I can let setup screens go, and I'm guilty of this myself with my UI design. Setup screens, you see briefly, you put in once, it's done. Who cares if they look nice or not? The the core UI experience is beautiful on Xbox Companion app. It's just that page you actually use quite frequently and yes people can quite fairly argue that if you're using that screen and you're tapping away on the xbox you'll be looking at the xbox not at the phone but it just could look a bit nicer and it's really sad that that matters to me but it does no no i I agree i agree so maybe microsoft can listen Give us a little bit yeah, of Microsoft, if you're listening, just make it look a little bit prettier. Or even if you can go a bit of two-way communication, show us what those buttons are going to do. Give us contextual A and B buttons because that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> let's just quickly talk about its troubles because we did have a bit of an issue this week. Um, it was that we effectively it went live and a couple of days later the whole of xbox live services went down um, which was a particular issue for people who wanted to play games online or if you wanted to sign into your profile for the first time since you'd upgraded your xbox uh, version everything just wouldn't work i had a flatmate that got very angry about it in fact because he just upgraded his xbox and then couldn't play any games with the uh, network plugged in because his uh, his profile wouldn't sign in for good um and I think I just wanted to sort of make a point of it. I work in uh, the IT service industry, and as much as I'd like to say that everybody can should be able to achieve 100% uptime, it's impossible. Um, so you've got to allow Microsoft having a bit of a hiccup, having a, a few hours outage. They got it fixed at the end of the day. Um, but it was a bit of a shame when they just released all these new features. It just all went down the tube. Mm-hmm. Um, have you got anything to add? No. Uh, I mean, I experienced okay. it. It was Saturday night. I had the same problem. And so it was a little fortunate they obviously had some issues with the rollout. Uh, they seem to be straight now. Now, I had problems too. But some of the apps, I would install YouTube and it would install, then it would disappear and I couldn't use it. Mm. Today was actually the first day I was able to use the YouTube app, which is kind of nice, but whatever. It's kind of nice. But, <laughs> I mean, so, so they had some problems, but and I, was, I know some people were, you know, mixed on the Metro thing. It's one of those things that they, they gra- you know, really, really reworked the UI. And so there's that shock when you go to use it and it feels different, you don't like it at first. But I think, uh, yeah, as people use it more, they'll, they'll get accustomed to it. And I think overall yeah. the roll-up was pretty good considering. So, but, um. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next piece of news now, which is uh, the Xbox Live apps that have been released. So all the Windows Phone apps, in fact, have been released for iOS. And uh, I want to call Renee in for this one because uh, as our resident iOS uh, bloke mm. guy fella, um, I want to get his opinion on it a bit. Effectively, let's let's just start with the positives here and put aside the the argument because this this news article could take us a while to talk through. Let's just start with Renee. What are your opinions on Connectables and the Xbox Live Companion? If you've used either of them, uh, I have used Connectables. I have used the Live Companion. I have used the brand new spiffy OneNote app, and I have used the SkyDrive app. I think yep. we got almost as many <laughs> Windows Microsoft titles <laughs> this week as you guys did. Yes. And I'm quite curious to know what you think of the UI experience on them. I think they're really, really good. I mean, Dan said it best on Mobile Nations a couple of years ago. Who would think that <laughs> that this year, you know, Microsoft would be the one setting the pace for elegant UI design, not just on mobile, but in a lot of areas. I've always loved their media center team. I've always wished that they would be just given control over Windows. And it looks like someone, at least on mobile, is listening. Mm. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's a good question about the uh, Windows entertainment system. Uh, I wonder, is Sanofsky, was he in charge of that for a while? Because now he's the guy that's leading the Windows 8 initiative and is really considered to be the, the, the brainchild behind the rejuvenation of Microsoft and the Metro and you know, the different approach. 
there was a good article written a while ago talking about him and Jay Allard and stuff and how Microsoft basically chose to go different ways. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, they have uh, their Bing team is really good for design. The uh, entertainment uh, area for Windows was really good. And so they do have these teams and they're really finally picking up on the UI stuff. I want these people, I know some people are like throwing their hands up in the air, like how can Microsoft do this and offer this? Yeah. And it, it honestly doesn't bother me the slightest. For one, you got to understand Microsoft is multiple businesses. Windows Phone is one of them. You can make mm-hmm. an argument that they really need to grow it. But uh, I don't, as <laughs> Renee and I were talking about before the show, I don't think Connectimals, Animals, whatever that app is called, is going to make or break Windows Phone. It just isn't. I oh, mean, so it's, nice, <laughs> it's nice that we have it, but <laughs> it's not like... That's not the make or break app. It's the entire user experience. It's the whole picture. Yeah. Now, if they did this for every single app, you know, I think like for instance, the Xbox Companion app is way more significant than Connectables. Yes. And so if they can keep that exclusive, I'll be happy. But they don't need to keep everything exclusive because the more you get Microsoft out there, the more people, even on Apple, start associating Microsoft with elegant UI design, yeah. the more they'll be persuaded the next time to actually get you know, get the whole experience. Because right now, there is this perception that Microsoft doesn't know how to do design at all. They don't know how to do consumer stuff. And so as they can slowly convince people that, no, in fact, they can, uh, I think that's fine for the operating system as a whole. Yeah. And I think you're quite right then. There's actually two ways that they're looking at it. And we've got SkyDrive that came, went over, OneNote went over. Um, to people who say, okay, UI design is not important to Microsoft, I'd point at Windows 7 because just looking at Windows 7, the desktop OS, I think that made huge strides in terms of the UI of sure. uh, working with things. But putting all that aside as to how people view Microsoft, this is actually potentially a portal for those who are interested in the Windows Phone side of things and are sort of sitting on their iPhones at the moment. This is a way for them to try it a bit more. This is a way for them to get involved in these services and actually means that what you're doing, you'll migrate over to the win- to the Windows Phone system. You might already have your notes on there from OneNote. You might already have your documents that you've uploaded to SkyDrive. And effectively, it's a really simple way for them to transition from the iPhone, if they want to, to the Windows phone system. If Microsoft released some kind of contact migrating app, I would argue that's the, been their strategy the whole way along. But regardless of that factor, simple app software shouldn't, doesn't have to be exclusive for a platform to win. It's about the whole experience. Well, two and things, I Jane, think can that, you tell Nintendo that? Very pleased for all of us. <laughs> And I think it's also brilliant because people who might be kind of fed up with Google on iPhone might be very willing to give Microsoft a shot and that that gives them market share and exactly that easy path to migration that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And And it's just... so you ahead, this idea of services is real important because people, I think, are getting a little concerned with Google and their presence as well as their practices. And so Microsoft can step in and be like, hey, we're a good alternate, believe it or not, to and Google. That's, and so that's, yeah. that's actually a really good point, Dan. The Android services or Google services are available on every single platform. Does it hurt Android? Yeah, no. It hasn't seemed to. So, uh, Although you can argue that they haven't done much for Windows Phone lately. <laughs> so, no, which is kind of an that. odd thing. Uh, but, but then again, we haven't done much for Android either, <laughs> as uh, Renee put it earlier in the yeah. comments. They got zero yeah. apps from us this week. Yeah, so you know, I guess it works both ways, which is fine, right? I, I don't know. I, um, I guess it's tip for tap there. So uh, let's Rafael, head into Rafael's software put an interesting thing. Just before we go to software news, Raphael just sure. put an interesting thing on the, our comments saying, uh, obviously, for those who don't know, Raphael, is it Raphael or Raphael? I can't pronounce his name. Uh, what happens when Microsoft applications on other platforms work and look better than Windows Phone? And his suggestion seems to be that OneNote looks better on iPhone than on and Windows actually, Phone. And actually, Bing. Bing gets this comment a lot. Bing is supposed to be, uh, it's an amazing experience on the iPad. Anyone who's had a chance to try it, it's, I mean, everybody gave uh, the Bing app like huge, huge praise on the iPad because it's really an it's interesting gorgeous. experience. Yeah. Mm. And so, no, it, it's a good point. Uh, there does need to be, yeah. If, if something comes out on Windows Phone, it should look or, and be a little bit better <laughs> on the competitors. Uh, yeah. I guess that's sort of tough though because. If you are part of Microsoft's team designing, say, the Bing app for the iPad, and you have these great ideas, and it's like, oh, it's gorgeous. Uh, imagine if your manager came and said, that's a great work. Can you tone it down now? <laughs> Make it a little <laughs> less awesome. So uh, you know, I have to respect sometimes the designers and these project managers, and their job is to make the best product available. And yeah. hopefully what happened with the iPad and Bing app the rest of the Microsoft Bing teams are looking at that going, that's pretty cool. We should bring that over to the other services. So it doesn't need to go back and forth. It's a good point. Uh, 
yeah, they, they can't outpace each other too much. That's, that's definitely yeah, sure. it's pretty good way of putting it. And I'm guessing, Renee, you'll agree with that one that uh, just you know, it, they can exist on the iPad, but it, perhaps if Microsoft are serious about Windows Phone, what they should be doing is making it available on other platforms, but perhaps making the experience that a little bit better on Windows Phone. Yeah, that's exactly what Google does. I mean, you get Gmail on everywhere, but Gmail on Android is just killer. So if you're really serious about it, you go to Android. And I think Microsoft will find that balance. iPad is really mature and it's got a big screen and Microsoft's not really in the tablet fight till next year. So they're probably not too concerned about it. Um, mm-hmm. But in general, I think that's that's just it. They There's a lot of eyeballs on the iPad in the tablet space and they would much rather those eyeballs be on Microsoft software than on anything else. The same reason they make Office for Mac still. That's a very good point. Okay, sorry, Dan, now to software news. <laughs> so uh, speaking of Raphael, who's in our chat room right now, uh, he yeah. wrote his first article for us. Uh, I'd like to actually welcome Raphael to WP Central. He'll be contributing articles yeah. uh, as he wishes when he feels something he wants to write <laughs> on. So we kind of gave him an open door to the site, and he can basically uh, post things. So Raphael, as you guys probably know, is part of the Chevron WP7 team. He's one of the first, uh, him and Long Chen. And Chris Walsh were the guys behind unlocking the phones, and they're really big on the development and ecosystem. And they're like a nice little thorn in the side of Microsoft. It's a pleasant thorn, though. I think Brandon Watson and everybody appreciates their work sometimes. <laughs> but uh, so it's sometimes. really good. <laughs> well, obviously, sometimes it can cause a headache too. But I think it's all in. Um, it's all out of love for Microsoft. So, anyways, mm. he uh, he's really good, obviously, at security. Uh, things on the platform, breaking down applications, reverse engineering things, seeing what they're doing. And in this case, we're talking more about piracy on the marketplace and this game final mission. So this is an ongoing problem with ROMs and emulators. It's one thing, now we have an emulator on the marketplace, VNS Lite, which uh, it's made by Nudia, I believe it's Nudia from XDA. And I'm actually okay with putting just the emulator on the marketplace with no games leave it up to the user then to you know, make a circumvent law. Uh, different story, though, if you throw up the emulator with the ROM of a game built into it and didn't even charge money for, for it. Uh, that yeah. definitely crossed this line. And so this is an ongoing saga. This gets into, we know Microsoft is pretty good when something does go wrong with the marketplace, they can quickly pull the app. Uh, I think the other problem is how do you screen apps from getting there in the first place? Yeah, and it, you know, it makes you once question the screening process, doesn't it? Yeah, and so I understand it's tough. I mean, they're obviously getting a lot of submissions every day, and how can you screen every single one? Like, I, I don't know if there's a human behind some of these things going. Oh wait, there are. a final mission is that a uh, you know is that a game from another platform? Should we flag this? It, you know, there, there needs to be, I guess, a little bit more scrutiny, and it's not our job, of course, to come up with solutions for for this. This is Microsoft's responsibility. And they really need to do it because obviously, you know, protecting intellectual property is it's a big part of the marketplace. They yeah. need to start doing it, and people profiting off of it is sort of, you know, you know it's, I think it's, it's, it's it's terrible because I'm very anti piracy in software, but then again, I'm a biased person. I'm a developer, um, mm-hmm. and it's actually why I'm quite glad that well. Chevron's team's done what Raphael's done is that there there is a system there which doesn't promote piracy; it promotes homebrew, which is exactly what it should be. Um, and I'm, it's particularly good to me to see somebody who was so keen on the on the homebrew community uh, to see him stand up against piracy. And I think Raphael's absolutely spot on. It's it's disgusting that someone goes and just tries to profit off an old bit of software that someone else has actually put the time and written. And it's great that actually it got pulled um, eventually. What's interesting is that an hour later, uh, another game was published. It was what was it? Uh, it was based on Fortress of oh, sorry, Battle Kid, Fortress of, Pe- of uh, Peril, uh, but it was under the name of Battle Mech Kid. Um, it's I don't know. It, it, it's it's horrible the fact that someone can just go and do this. And what it does make you question how actually could Microsoft screen this? Because honestly, it's probably quite difficult to identify that that's an old game. Um, but at the same time, there is a human behind it, and Microsoft's taking about five days to to bring out this kind of stuff, to bring out to certify our apps. It's five working days. It seems like in five working days, you could put this kind of check in place. Sure. Yeah, it's definitely an ongoing problem. Um, hopefully, you know, I, I'm going to give Microsoft a little wiggle room here that maybe they're putting in procedures to address this. Um, mm-hmm. But so long as this stuff happens, I think if we cover it, it'll, it'll keep. You know, pushing them a little bit to 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 do a little bit more. 
So hopefully uh, it won't be, we won't see too much more of this, but there needs to be some procedures in place. And likewise, going back to found being, you know, pulled yeah. and not having its updates uh, approved, this really, you know, needs to be resolved with Microsoft. This, I'm tired of this no adult content and adult content meeting. I mean, the idea that you can search for these like hot girl apps on the, uh, and there's tons of yeah. them, right? And like partially nude women and all this. That's okay, but I was I was so sure you're about to say there's not enough. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> this is just really, really dumb. I mean, they need to come up with a system. I mean, for instance, and, and forget about found for a moment. I'm hearing Reddit apps are being blocked for their updates because of the same thing. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's why there's no Reddit app right now that's apparently mm. Mango certified because these developers. There's also um, Flick and Share, I think it was, uh, mm. which is an app where Flickr also has had its update blocked because of yeah. adult content. And, and so, image, wind, image Wind that lost its, uh, its Twitter feed stream, which was yep. probably the coolest part of Image Wind. That was the whole of point of Image Wind. Right now yeah. it's just a Flickr stream. So uh, I, I, this is ridiculous. Microsoft, please do something about it. We're adults. The majority of us are freaking adults. <laughs> it's like, We're adults. just give We're me a little thing that I be allowed to. to it. Or, go, or allow me to go into my uh, account profile and check something that I enable and just allows me to, to, to view those. I mean, this isn't, this, this, isn't this should be quite science. doable. I think there should yeah. be a settings option in windows phone, which says, yes, I want this. No, I don't want this. And then the apps can dive into the, to the API and say, are you allowing this kind of content? Yes. Okay. Let's carry on. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's uh, doable. Is, I mean, cause something like Reddit, Reddit's a huge part of the web. I mean, I don't know. I'm sorry. If, if anyone has never been to Reddit, just go there and, Kiss any productivity you ever had, goodbye. But uh, <laughs> it, it's really great. And I'm, right now I'm actually beta testing two Reddit apps that are really beautiful. They're both Mango ready. And one of them, uh, I'll just give a shout out. It's called Bacon It, which is pretty funny. It's an inside joke if you're on Reddit. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's, it has pinnable, you can pin your subcat. I mean, it's just really nice. But it's been blocked. Every time he submitted yeah. it, it's been blocked. Now he's put an adult content filter on it where you check, you know, yes, no, I agree to it. But I'll be honest, and I'm going to do a little video review of this, but I, I'll be honest, I don't think it's going to be enough because Flick and Share, I believe, had an adult content thing where you agree to it. Uh, that wasn't enough. And so sometimes, and that, what really bothers me is once again, getting to, back to Final Mission, this stuff gets through for, and then they can yeah. do a couple updates. And then all of a sudden, Microsoft goes, hey, wait, hey, that's violation. Yeah. Uh, now we're not going to you were going to block any updates. It's like, well, they should have blocked it in the first place, <laughs> at least instead of allowing it on the marketplace. So, and I'm just going to read out two interesting comments from our chat room there. Is that the Wee Bear points out the staff that you can actually find tons of dodgy stuff in Bing. That's an open search forum. Uh, and sure. as uh, D Swink says, 10-year-old shouldn't have smartphones. Yeah, interesting yeah. Is that, well, yeah, the fact that you can just go on IE9 and type in all sorts of words. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, words. and there, there's being image search apps. I mean, there, there's just so many loopholes. This is just a really dumb thing. They need a more sane policy and, mm. you know, just treat us like the adults we are. So I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, Reddit shouldn't be blocked because there may be not safe for work things on there. That's mm. stupid. Anyways, bullets had to brighter pastures and we could talk about the new egg app, which came out, which yes. is pretty cool. Which doesn't exist in the UK. So I'm going to let you talk. Newegg is sort of like, well, I don't want to say they're like Best Buy because like they're the anti-Best Buy. They don't have any physical stores. They're strictly online. And there, if you're into modding PCs, building your own PCs, or you're into electronics in general, Newegg is the place to go. They have some of the lowest prices, the best deals, free shipping, just great customer support. They're sort of like the Amazon and Zappos for electronics. And anyone who's dealt with okay. both those companies know just how good – the customer service and experiences. Newegg is the same way. I especially love them because I'm in New York and they charge us uh, sales tax on any internet purchases here. So even Amazon, I get charged sales tax. We're only like one of five states, I think, that has this. But Newegg is exempt because they don't have any physical stores in New York and so they're in Jersey. So I can actually get save tax money from them. But they released an official app. It's actually really nice. It's completely mango. It uh, mm -hmm. allows you to view the deals of the day, which is probably really the big selling point. You can also access your account and do purchases right there. Uh, I see room for improvement. They can use some pinnable stuff. Uh, live tile would be nice. But as a version 1.0, I'm not going to knock it. It's elegant. It's nicely well designed and everything. So, Yeah, I, 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 I've not seen it. I'd actually... They, Based on your description, they remind me of uh, eBuyer over here in the UK, and I'd mm -hmm. quite like to see uh, eBuyer do something over here. But uh, 
it's yeah it sounds like it's going to be a great app it sounds like it's the sort of thing that everyone's going to enjoy and it's sort of one of the bigger apps this week um, but the other big app this week of course is uh, the SkyDrive app uh, right. which we briefly mentioned before have you had a chance to use it yet because I've barely touched it I'll be honest I've installed it I haven't I don't use SkyDrive a lot so I'm sort of the wrong person to go to this I, I just haven't embraced SkyDrive yet I actually do use Dropbox only because it's a little bit more platform independent and that more people are sort of familiar with it. It's nice. I, I think it works very well. It's very smooth. It loads quickly. Those are all important things. I like the design mm-hmm. of it. But it's a little bit limiting, right? You can just manage your photos. Okay, that's nice. Uh, you can see your music, and you can delete and share it. You can't, uh, and you can play it, but you can't save it. It's kind of weird. So, um, I mean, I, can, I wouldn't necessarily want to be able to... Yeah, it makes sense that you can sort of play it and so that you can just sort of manage it a bit. It, uh, so, I mean, well, why can't I save it to my phone? Sc- well, yeah, I can save yeah. I can save photos to my phone. I yeah, mean, it just seems I mean, that is that's a fairly good point. And actually, a SkyDrive cloud. This was actually a good chance for Microsoft to come up with something to to rival Amazon and Google's. You upload your files, then you can stream them back again, which I still think is pointless. But it would have been a nice thing to have. Just to well, you can do that. Well, you can stream on. the music. Yeah, but not download, as you say. And right, right. Yeah. It's and I'm guessing that the streaming doesn't exactly interact in the in a perfect way. It's just uh, you down you click on that app, it's just that a file, and it comes down. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't pull any information from the file, no image art or anything like that. It doesn't do anything with Zoom, which I, I just it, it's okay. You know, I, perhaps other people in comments can uh, suggest you know if it's really good or not. For me, it's okay. Yeah. But well, the SkyDrive integration is already pretty nice. I think a Windows Phone is just another you know decent way to I guess interact with it, but. Uh, you know, I, I don't see myself using it very much, but I think others will. So. Yeah. yeah, a couple of people in the comments have said that they some we've got about fifty actually. A lot of people say they love it; it's good. They love it; works really well. Others are saying Gibby Home, for example, saying he's not impressed with it. He wishes it was a native experience, and um, which I think uh, it will be. I mean, I think this is a stopgap. I think when Windows Phone Eight comes out, this will all be built in. But they can't. You either get the app out now or. You wait for another major OS update. This is, I think, an okay stopgap for that. So uh, I don't worry. I think I think Microsoft's going to integrate all their services into the OS, but that stuff takes time. So mm. I say so. that's pretty opening, but it's good to see that it's there. And people have been asking for a SkyDrive app. It's one of the things that Molly, what was her name from CNET, didn't like. Sure. Um, so it's quite good the fact that we can now Hollywood. say, "Hey, look, we've we've got better integration." Um, so there you go. Um, what else have we got this week? Oh, yeah, the uh, the SMS bug. I thought we should just briefly cover on this. Yeah, and as uh, Raphael will point out, it's actually not an SMS bug. It's actually, <laughs> I mean, it affects no, SMS, but also affects Facebook. Well, you know, but it, it's more independent of SMS. It affects Facebook and other and a live messenger. It affects basically lots of aspects of the OS. SMS, I think, is the easiest one. Uh, it's the one you can anonymously send stuff to, you know, where it's like uh, on Facebook and Messenger, you need to have you know contact with that person to be you know be sent that. But yeah, so this is an interesting uh, flaw uh, where people can evidently send a really long and detailed code to your phone, and it puts it into a, the phone will start throwing fits. So mm-hmm. uh, other operating systems have had this. It's evidently uh, Raphael wrote on his site that. It doesn't affect just Windows Phone. It actually affects other Microsoft products, which is sort of interesting. Yeah. So it seems to something inherent in the way Microsoft was doing things. Uh, Microsoft has now come forward and said, yeah, we're aware of it. We're quickly working on it. Everybody is hopefully anticipating that this may be the first instance of them attempting an over-the-air update to get this fixed. I can't say that's true or not. It would be a nice, I think, opportunity <laughs> for them to give it mm-hmm. a shot. But we'll have to actually see how this um, gets resolved because... Otherwise, I think it might be a month or two. And right now, we're lucky this code hasn't leaked out to the internet. So, but could you imagine how the, <laughs> if yeah. you got this code? I mean, you could just send it to all your friends and stuff. So it would just all go right. I mean, that's. I mean, that's like I said, there's not an awful lot to say here yet. If you get a dodgy text message, your phone will start throwing some fits. Um, right now, as you say, it'd be interesting to see how this gets resolved. But that's about all there is really to report at the moment. We can't tell you to watch out for a text message because if you get it, you're going to get it. So. Right. Right. Yeah, uh, so let's 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 move on from that one. Um, we've got a lot of Xbox Live games this week. Um, one of them is free, Breeze, uh, which is uh, it reminds me of uh, there was a game called Flower for the PS3 some time ago, which was blowing uh, wind at 
petals to make things happen which by the way was this awesome game if you've got a ps3 and you haven't yet played flower on the marketplace go and go and grab it um but putting that aside there's breeze which is this nice uh i don't know if it's it's kind of like a platformer puzzle ish thing it, i don't really know quite how to cl- how to classify it really uh, i've only had a couple of minutes with it um we've then got doodle god uh which my understanding is this did start out as a non-xbox live title and then got suddenly got xbox live status uh, thrown onto it when it was originally pulled from the marketplace uh and then battle wagon now i've played doodle god i can't say i don't get it but i haven't played battle wagon have you I did for a couple of minutes. Uh, I need to go back into it and play tomorrow. I've been really busy. But I, the graphics for Battle Wagon are fantastic looking. So I'm kind of psyched by it. I think it looks really nice. I need to try it a little bit more. It sort of like has some Angry Bird aspects to it with the slingshot. Uh, and it looks like it has some interesting challenges. The reviews, I think, so far have been pretty solid for it. So uh, I know Paul initially said you know, he had some issues with the physics of the catapult and you know how much you can see on the screen. I can kind of see that. You don't, it is zoomed in really close. Uh, I need to play a little bit more to see what I think of it. But, yeah, it was definitely a busy week. Uh, you know, the breeze, uh, it's okay. I tried it for a couple of minutes. not my style. It's, I think if you like it's nice. something like It's interesting. Like, it's interesting, and it's free, so you can't really slam it too hard. But if you sort of like breeze, but you want a little bit more or more interesting, mm. I had to really highly recommend a game uh, out there called Cell. Uh, Cell. It's just, yeah, C-E-L-L. Uh, it's mm-hmm. similar, but it deals with these like organisms like cells and i think that's even based on another game which i forgot the name of uh but it's the same concept you push the cell around and propagate and move it to other areas to swallow other things and it has sort of a similar vibe to it but it's a little bit the graphics i think are really cool they're very kind of minimalist and bright and just that's quite cool. stand out so so give that game a shot it's 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 really fun and has some cool music to it but uh no, it was, it was a good week for Xbox. I'm actually more excited about next week with Mini Squadron, the little airplane game. So we yeah. talked about that before. I think that one looks really cool. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. This week, yeah, I haven't tried uh, this, Doodle God. I don't know. This, this, this week, there's three great games that you can sort of play. And putting aside my slight problem with Breeze and that when the adverts load, it stutters because it's, I think it seems to be hanging up the UI thread. Um, it's, you know, it's a free game. It's great. Um, Doodle God so far, I still don't quite get. I've combined a few elements and then I got really bored quite quickly. I'm sure there's something else that's going to happen, but I don't know. Um, and then there is uh, obviously Battle Wagon. I don't quite understand what that game is for. It looks to be almost like Angry Birds, but I'm guessing I'm wrong. No, no, I think it's, it has sub games in it. And that's one of them. Um, there's also like you attack a castle and stuff like that, build battle wagons. It's actually kind of interesting. But hopefully Paul will take a review with that. And, you know, mm. <laughs> Paul's been doing some controversial that. reviews this week, by the way, if you're interested. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Paul always makes good always arguments. Always one on tentacles. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, were you, uh, how, how are you, <laughs> did you take his reviews? I, you love tentacles. I, uh, I put my fist through a wall again. No, I didn't really. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it, do you know what? Actually, the annoying thing is, I don't agree. He, he comes down a little bit too harsh on it because it does get very challenging at the end, but he is actually right. Um, and Paul is right. He, Paul, and Paul's right that it's difficult for us to tap between. It's difficult for it's, some of the level design gets. I can't tell if it's just really hard or frustrating. The last boss was just frustration all over it. It seemed almost impossible to beat. But I have beaten the game. You know, I didn't get three stars the whole way through. I've beaten the game. I've actually uninstalled it since because uh, at the time I needed the space. Um, but he is right. He is right. It's a it's a very frustrating game. Um, it's no Sally Salon, as our chat room is pointing out. But uh, it is uh, it's not an easy game to play. Um, and it starts off quite well. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... Uh, you know, people people take your stuff personally, but hey, if, if you like <laughs> tentacles, uh, this that's it. You don't need Good. to be convinced otherwise. You know, so that's fine. You know, Paul points out, you know, these are basically opinions, but he does back up his opinions at least with some facts. I always like reading his stuff because of that. So, but uh, sorry, yeah, take it with a Ren- grain of salt, people. <laughs> sorry, Renee is just suggesting that Rovio needs to make a game called Angry Brits for me. <laughs> what is that? So <laughs> I can work. do the voiceover. Renee, is that so I can do the voiceover? Is that your plan? Is it so you can have yeah, the uh, he says, he downtrodden? Says yes. You have the downtrodden <laughs> firebombing, like your uh, your convenient your your stores and everything. So. Well, how would Angry Brits work? We, we, every time we I get launched, I go oh bugger as I go over. Pretty well, much, that, yeah. They, they, they throw little petrol bombs. I think you call them at the uh, the police. Um, yeah, I'd actually buy <laughs> that. Reminds me, I was I was going to record a, a voice thing for uh, for Ashley Escada this uh, week because she was uh, using her fake British accent again. 
Uh, so I want to do I want to do a uh, that's bollocks for her. So if you want to rip that out, Ashley, and take it, feel free. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let's hold on to uh, <laughs> hardware news. Uh, oh, win a Focus S. Yes, we have a contest. We're giving away a Samsung Focus S, which actually, you know, uh, we've been kind of harsh on the Focus S, but I actually have to admit I'm, I'm, I'm back on it right now, so I'm actually using it again. That's partly Ooh. because they've been releasing... They've been releasing some updates to make the screen brightness, I think, in my opinion, a little bit better. It's still, it's still annoying sometimes. I'll, I still have two annoyances with it. One, I'm playing games. It gets too dark sometimes, and that's kind of annoying. The other one is the, the phone is so thin and light that the vibration sucks on this. When it's in my pocket, <laughs> I miss every message, basically, because I just don't feel it. Meanwhile, the radar <laughs> will rattle my fillings out. The radar, when it sits I, on a table, like you'll hear it across the room when it vibrates. It sounds like the world is ending. I'd never wow. thought about that, the fact that it's really thin and it just ends up being difficult to... Because the, the Lumia is noticeably more vibration-heavy than the Omnia ever was, but I thought that was just yeah. the, the motor. It's a combination. I'm sure they could have put a, a stronger you know, engine in it to when it shakes and compensate for that a bit, but obviously it doesn't. And so, uh, and the volume is also significantly lower than the Radar and Titan, which are loud phones. That, and they're loud in a good way. They don't get distorted, but they crank. And when those uh, alerts go off, like I said, I totally feel them. And this, I just don't. I miss almost every message. It's too quiet sometimes for me. And so, it's still annoying, but I've come around and I'm still using it now as my daily driver. I'll eventually switch back to probably the Titan. I'm still using the Radar. By the way, a little plug here for the Radar before we go into the Focus S here. Uh, I enabled the 4G tethering with it through t mobiles site, which is actually really nice. And I was getting outstanding speeds in New York City. I used it at the event last night for uploading video and just, you know, screw Sprint and their WiMAX. Uh, I was getting like five megs down and two megs up, which I thought Your was Your love pretty- story continues. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm just saying that that's, it's a good deal for 15 bucks a month. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm getting that as opposed to $60 a month to do my laptop. So uh, just, I think it's a really good deal for on T-Mobile. And you'll be able to do the same thing with the Lumia 710. But yes, we're giving away a Focus S. Mm. Now, this is an AT&T phone. You can unlock it, or at least you should be able to unlock it, but we can't guarantee that. So this is open to international people. Uh, but just be aware of that, obviously. And but I think people still should uh, you know participate. I, the contest. I can, uh, can I do it? Can I enter? Or is there, is that against regulations? I think it may be a little biased. But uh, <laughs> the contest is pretty simple. Actually, we kept the the entry level low here. Basically, we're looking for people to design lock screen wallpapers for WP Central. And so we have a thread over there. We've even given you some of the graphics for our logo and everything to get you started for Photoshop. And you just gotta. You can submit as many times as you want. It doesn't matter because we only want to pick one winner for the focus has. But mm. if, if you think you can submit five, hey, go ahead. That's that's totally cool. And I just want to point people over to that thread. Uh, go check it out. There's some mm. really amazing, you know, wallpapers being submitted. Like I'm actually really. I mean, I don't want to say I'm too impressed because I know our audience is pretty talented. But still, like I was just like looking through it. He's like, there's a lot of good submissions. And so if yeah. you want to go over there and just look through and stuff and. If you think you got some Photoshop skills and some, uh, you know, ideas, I, throw it in. I there. do not know how we're going to judge this one. Yeah, well, we have a couple runner-up uh, prizes we'll, we'll be giving away to. And can I announce maybe that we may be including the stuff in the app? I think you just did. Okay. So I, <laughs> my plan, at least, but we got to work out the details, is that we're going to at least include the top couple submissions. Because we're going to have, because there's so many good ones. And so. Yes. We we have yeah. a we have a plan for the app to start providing you a little bit more than just the news and the podcast. And our plan is to start giving you a few little fun bits for your phone, kind of in the vein of the way the Insider works, the Insider app yeah. works. Exactly. So whoever the winner is and the top couple entries, you'll be in our app too. Meaning that yes. you can go to like, you know, you'll be able to download them to your phone. So it's good yep. distribution and uh, you know promotion. <laughs> we're we're on not? almost thirty thousand downloads now, so it's pretty good uh, distribution. But uh, great stuff. I'm already, I'm already using a couple of these wallpapers already on my phone. I won't give away which ones I'm using, but mm-hmm. I'm using. They're, they're really nice stuff. So go check it out. I think it's a great contest. We'll be giving away probably more phones, too, throughout December. I think we have a couple other ones, but focus us right now. Good phone. Go get it. Yep. Uh, the Dark Lumia Rises. Do you like this that? Is kind of, this is bizarre. It's weird. I'm not really sure what the deal with this is. I, I'll speculate. So this is a special super limited edition Nokia Lumia 800 that features the Batman logo as well as Batman like start tiles and the whole thing. I shouldn't want it because it's such a 
cash in, it's but cheesy. I really do. Yeah, it's a little cheesy. <laughs> But uh, Sin is pretty awesome. Now, and Batman doesn't I can doesn't completely believe this as well, by the way. I was watching uh, The Dark Knight uh, last night, and of course remember that the Nokia 5800 was all over that as the Sonic phone. So Nokia and the, Dark- and the Batman franchise have a history. So that's my guess here is that they used this actually in the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. We're trying to show the Batman logo per se, but that people actually had Lumias, and so the use were probably from the set or something like that. I'm not really sure, because the movie doesn't come out until July, so it's weird to have like you know a limited edition phone for a movie that's not even close to being released. They did finish shooting, but they're in post-production right now. So there's only 40 of them, but they're pretty awesome looking. And I think, once again, backing up the concept, Nokia is good for Windows Phone as an OS. And every time I talk to Nokia, they say that. They're like, listen, we're not competing against ETC, Samsung for Windows Phone. You know, Mm -hmm. we're all the same operating system. We're competing against Android. And so in, in the iPhone. So this stuff, I think, is really good. Just uh, you know, media exposure, and uh, it's pretty cool. So yeah, it's 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 just pretty. That's the thing. I can't get over it. It's very very pretty, and yeah, <laughs> that's all I've really got to say. Um, but which brings us on nicely to uh, my next point, my next uh, point here, which I said last week that I would come back after my first week spent with my Nokia Lumia. Um, first and to say, as much as I like the fact that the blue case comes with it, I don't know how well to show up on the video, but the blue case gets dirty very quickly and already is not the same color blue. So <laughs> that's one thing. The blue case is nice, but already the sides are a bit black and the uh, sides, the rest of it's a duller blue, which I actually kind of like. It takes the glare off a little. <laughs> but putting that aside, I spent a week with this phone now and I'm really, really impressed. I got the 7740 update for the Cyan version last night, in fact. Didn't need it as far as I'm concerned. I couldn't see much wrong with the phone. Um, the Basically, the, the beauty of it is is that the battery, I'm ha- absolutely fine with. The battery's been good quality. It lasts for easily the day that I'd expect it to last for, uh, just a bit above the Omnia. Um, it's generally been very reliable. It did actually die on me once, but I didn't charge it overnight, so that's my fault. Um, I haven't had a single crash with it. I haven't had the whole the thing die at all. It runs quickly it runs beautifully you can see it running a couple of live tiles there one of which will be our own app there um in fact the thing to say about it if overall is that the hardware just keeps getting me every time i get out of my phone out of my pockets which for the record people on the chat room are not that filthy it's my pockets are perfectly fine um, <laughs> it's it's a great little app device and you can see our app's uh, new potentially new live tile there uh, which is still being a little bit dodgy, but uh, it's everything's running really, really quickly, and I'm generally incredibly happy with it. And I'm going to quickly use this, uh, this chance to show off uh, the redesign that we've done to the uh, app. If you haven't already seen it, that's what the redesign will now look like. You might recognize that start screen. looks a little bit more like the one on your normal start screen. Um, it's It's superb, and I would have a very hard time to dissuade anybody away from this phone. It's... It's exactly what the what the first Nokia phone out the gate should be. It's reliable, it feels great to use, and it's the same great Windows phone experience that everyone's expected. So absolute completely agree with Rich's review of nine out of ten for this one. And that's that's my opinion. Very good. <laughs> there we go. But let's see if we agree, because we have some interesting stuff this week from uh, CNET's McCracken, or Harry McCracken, who's his full, uh, word, full name, uh, who was talking a little bit about his experience with the Lumia 800. And we've had a few of these this week uh, with regards to how the... Um, how people, new people are finding using the Lumia as their first Windows phone device. Um, and it seems to be really, really positive. All that I'm reading is really positive stuff regarding first attempts at windows phone through the lumia and it just i don't know i'm kind of bowled over by it a little bit because all of a sudden people are saying oh i've moved away from my iphone i've just given this given the lumia a try which it helps the fact that it's a micro sim so you can just literally jump out of the iphone 4s and it's fantastic it's really really good and it's it's great to see i don't know if you agree with me here or you're being quite silent at the moment Hmm. Um, yeah, no, um, my thoughts on this is there's been a, a change, definitely, in how people are perceiving Windows Phone, Microsoft, Metro in general. And so you're starting to see the press now is really, really getting behind it and looking at them as sort of the underdog and deserving a fair chance. All week we've been highlighting articles but pointing out how uh, such and such phone is in the top five. Such you know, And you have a lot of people who are... Uh, iOS and you know Apple fans who use the iPhone are converting over to Windows Phone or at least uh, you know singing its praises about how nice it is, and so you're really starting to see uh, the change. I, I actually would point out I, I would say this week is probably the week where you can start to say things are definitely 
changing for the better. You're not going to see a tidal wave, I think, for Windows Phone. You're going to see the slow wave building up, and I think that will continue through 2012. And so this is, I think, the start of that, and I think we're going to just get a lot more exposure, a lot more people you know, putting their uh, support behind it. You know, we have other apps come out this week. Uh, what's that, Sky Search one for the airlines? So mm. we've had, we're getting a lot more major players on board. So this is, I think, all, you know, really a big uh, sea change for the operating system. Yeah, I could quite agree with you. Um, that brings us out. No, it doesn't quite bring us out of hardware news yet. Uh, I forgot one more. Um, HTC has made a couple of best lists this week. Um, mm -hmm. specifically IGN and CNET's best lists. Uh, CNET for the Samsung Focus S, which we were just talking about, and we're warming to here at WP Central by the sounds of it, uh, and the Radar 4G, or also known as Daniel's Mistress, um, has topped <laughs> right. the IGN list. <laughs> it is, I swear, you've got the Titan and then you've got the, the Radar on the side for you. That's, just, that's how I view your Windows Phone interactions. That's pretty much it, yeah. There isn't a single person. I know a lot of people, like we talked about this endlessly, a lot of people on our site are like, ah, oh, radar's too small and all that. It's fine, but all the reviews for the Radar 4G have been through the roof. There isn't a single person that's said anything bad about it. So, And we've also talked about uh, you know, the site rankings, T-Mobile and AT&T customer feedback has been extremely high. These phones are getting 4.8, 4.9 stars from reviews, and they're some of the top-rated devices. And so I, I'm really hoping that catches the carrier's attention. Now, you can argue that the amount of reviews submitted are smaller proportionally to, say, like the Android phones, which may have been out longer. But, mm -hmm. you know, still, people feel strongly about these phones. I, everybody that's finally got their Titan now, because they're, they're starting to ship them again, uh, I keep getting emails and tweets, people going, you're right, this phone is amazing. It's, you know, it's one of the best phones I've ever had. And it's true. Uh, the second generation devices around are just really, really good. All the cameras are great. The screen's fantastic. So I'm glad to see these devices making the list now. And I think it's really good coverage. But, uh, they, they, you know, it's, it's good stuff out there. So. Yeah. And at some point, we're going to have to stop talking about the new devices because they're getting us quite excited. <laughs> I think we mention them every week. Um, yeah. So let's look, let's look to the future. And let's go on to our one talking point this week. And then we're going to be wrapping up. Um, and that is rolling thunder. Uh, and no, that's not the weather forecast here in the UK for the next couple of days. That's actually the code name that Nokia are giving uh, to their US launch system. Uh, now, if you've read this in detail, Daniel, as you'll probably know, we talked about the 900, the myth, the rumor, the legend, whatever the heck the 900 is. Um, but actually, putting, looking past this Nokia Lumia 900, if whether or not it will exist, what's interesting, I think, is the fact that Nokia have this big rollout plan. They want to they want to hit the US hard. They want to take, steal away the, the, the iPhone and the Android market share if possible. They want to make Windows Phone a, a genuine third, uh, third competitor in the mobile space. Sorry, BlackBerry. Um, but yet the 710 is about to come out. So this is kind of a mixed message. Uh, yeah, uh, perhaps. I think they're, you know, the idea of a rolling thunder campaign is uh, it's the idea of... It sounds like a, a US military operation. It is. That's what it is. Yeah. It actually comes from this idea of sustained oh, really? but intense bombing of an enemy <laughs> target, basically. Yeah. No, that's what it is. It's, um, I think it was used in Vietnam, actually, with uh, B-52 Stratofortresses and their carpet bombing of uh, targets in North Vietnam. So, so basically, what we should say right now is, U.S. residents, please be aware there's a good chance that there are going to be some Nokia Lumia 900s dropped on your we doorstep see from planes. Seeing giant so, bomber planes flying overhead. Yeah, uh, please look up yeah, when you walk out of your house. Just be sure, be safe. I out think there. it. <laughs> yeah, they could have also, I suppose, say shock and awe. Use another catch term uh, for oh, my, yeah. uh, for uh, military stuff here. But uh, yeah, rolling thunder is this idea that you're just going to constantly bombard your target with uh, you know bombings. And so, obviously, what Nokia means here, though, of course, is that they're just going to have a real intense advertising campaign. I say analogous to what's going on in Europe right now, which when I spoke with Nokia last night, I really gave him compliments. I'm like, listen, you know, that your campaign is just, it's really nice. <laughs> it's its mm -hmm. great to see. I think everybody who uses Windows Phone is appreciative of those ads. And even if we can't all buy Nokia phones or don't necessarily want the 800, it's just good for the uh, OS in general. So uh, it'll be real interesting uh, to see them come over to the U.S. and see their media campaign and what they do here. And I think they will be doing this a bit with T-Mobile, too. They said they're firmly behind it. And so uh, they said basically when you walk into a T-Mobile store that you're going to 
see front and center the Nokia phone. So I think that'd be real interesting to see in January how this is pushed in the stores. But from what I gathered, you will be seeing a uh, prominent display of the 710 in uh, T-Mobile stores. So. Hmm. I didn't say like it, it's, it's it's something for us to look forward to. I think as you, as we've said, we'll know more about this at CES, and we can we can put the story to bed for now. But it's uh, interesting to know that Nokia are, are very very serious about the US as a competitive space because previously they seem to have only ever dabbled. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll see on that one. Um, any more to say on that story, or should we roll on? Ah, uh, I think we should roll on. Let's roll on. Roll up. Uh, roll up to you. Okay, you're enjoying it. See, this is what happens when I get semantic, a few days It's called semantic priming when that happens. But, is it lexical really? Priming. Well, it's, it's actually called lexical priming. Semantic priming would be more on meaning, but lexical priming happens to me all the time. I use one word, then I'll use it again only a few sentences later. It's really annoying. Uh, this, this, is a yeah. news and ed- this is a news and educational podcast now, people. It's, it's kind of true. Yeah. Hey, Link. <laughs> so let's move on to your comments from last week. Um, we've already got a couple of comments to talk about this week because uh, we actually replied to a couple of them, which is unusual for us for the podcast post. Um, I have a feeling that was probably you testing out the comments functionality on the, win- on the app. Yes. Uh, which yeah. one? Uh, for? Uh, for, for the podcast 132. Yeah, I didn't put any comments on that, I don't think. For you that, put two on there. Yeah, but I don't know if it's on the app. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't on the app. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, that was just me getting excited about the fact that comments is working. Um, so the first qu- the first comment was, uh, if I were to search for this podcast on my Windows Phone Marketplace, what do I search by? Couldn't find it last night. WP Central Podcast was the answer. Uh, please understand that it does take a couple of hours for it to for Zoom to catch up. It's not instantaneous. Um, and Dreamer Bla- Dreamer Balau said, to, or Bala, sorry, said to you, he's got two ten on Shuffle Party. That was the game, impressive. right? Yeah. yeah, that's under the bowling app, app, and I think um, I think Paul has two oh nine right now. So yeah, that's at least two people beating me. I only got like one ninety seven on the bowling. So yeah, good. I still people. haven't downloaded it. Oh, it's such a good game. You got to try it. <laughs> I will. I will download it just because I promised now. And uh, okay, so uh, let's move on to the, the the big one, which is from Greasy Taco Aficionado. Um, It says, great podcast, boys, and was laughing at our discussions of biscuits last week. Um, I don't see it listed in your show notes, but the story about developers wanting native code access in Windows Phone 7 was the most interesting to me. Uh, In the story, we stated that native code access we don't think was included to revolve around OS stability and security. And now it seems like Microsoft is seriously considering open up some native code and access to developers. He's asking... Do you think Microsoft made the right decision? Uh, it's annoying that Apple seems to give developers the access that they need to make great games, while Microsoft doesn't. Uh, but then again, I've read reports that Infinity Blade is causing the iPhone 4 to crash. Um, do you know if Windows, 4, Windows 8 ARM tablets will have the same problem against the iPad 2 and 3, or is that a different situation? Um, I'm going to answer the, the latter sort of part of the story first. Uh, I don't think Windows 8 ARM tablets will be even slightly related because effectively Windows 8 has got to remain in some ways a native platform to continue to compete on the PC level. So that's completely unrelated as far as I'm concerned. Um, with regards to have Microsoft made the right decision um, to allow a bit of native access, Daniel, what do you think on that? Have, have Microsoft made the right decision, if they've made the decision at all? Uh, we have to obviously be careful how we word this because native yeah. access has this many meanings and I don't think I was even specific enough when I wrote this article, partly out of ignorance because we don't understand what exactly they mean. Sure. When we say native access, though, my bet is they're not going to throw the doors open like they do on Android and allow, you know, throw out all their concerns before and saying, you know, we're, we're not going to do this. I think this is more of a we're going to allow you to go deeper, but we're going to hold your hand approach, which is what they've done so far, meaning that they'll give you deeper access, but they're going to write APIs for developers to use and take advantage of these things. But they're also still be sandboxed in, so yep. you can do certain things but not others. So, you know, it's yeah, it, it's a it's a weird thing because then you can even argue it's maybe not exactly native access in the traditional sense. But uh, I think it, it, they're still going to control what developers can do and can't do, but they're going to allow you to go deeper things. For instance, adding a game engine is, you know, that is a significant new advancement. And yeah, so agreed. that does enter toward the, the little native stuff and, you know, taking over aspects the OS normally does. So I don't think they're throwing out their concerns. Perhaps I should have worded that a little better. I think, though, mm-hmm. they're, I think one, they have a little more time <laughs> to devote to adding features, right? Uh, when they, you know, when Noto and, you know, before Noto came out, they were all about just getting the OS out there and then quickly catching up to the competition. And they've done that, I think, a lot with Bango. Now that they're catching up, 
you're going to their game plan was always to start leapfrogging the competition and so now they're starting to go hey what else do, can we do what do you guys want and so i think they're starting to feel this out a little bit but um mm. i still think it's significant i don't think we'll see this till apollo you know windows phone 8 so that's agreed kind of a shame. if it's but, all uh, we'll see it then but i think I, I agree with you for game engines it's quite important for to keep up with everything yeah uh, so yeah Okay, let's move on to questions from the chat room, uh, if we have any. Uh, oh, we have our first one in from Shotgun, who asks, what is your favorite type of pie? No Daniel, comment. you go first. <laughs> I, I, I'm, gonna, I, I'm actually torn. I'm torn between lemon meringue slash Ugh. steak and kidney. Yeah. So what? There's, there's, there's some steak and kidney pie, is it? Oh, of course, steak and kidney pie doesn't really exist in America, does it? Not really. It totally doesn't. Oh. <laughs> it's no, you can't get that anymore. You don't have steak and kidney pie? Oh, my God. What about steak and ale pie? No, no. We don't put meats in pies except for uh, chicken pot pie. That's it. That's it. There's a chicken pot what, pie. What, That's it. What do you get with chips? Chips. <laughs> you, I don't want to get into yeah, this. No, because, sorry, with fries. Listen, what do you get with fries? Fries. <laughs> Hamburgers. Listen, but don't you, lecture me about pie. UK and your food. Your food is some of the worst cuisine in the world <laughs> i don't want to get started on this <laughs> worst cuisine in the world yes it's 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 up there you guys are not known i think the irish only have worse food than you guys do <laughs> oh i see this. what, <laughs> I mean, what about, the, what about the traditional roast listen i'm a vegetarian and you're, you're gonna, not going to get, you're, you're not gonna get you're, meat you're, arguments out of me so you hang on so you're going to say that the u.s has better food as in high, heavily imported from every other culture than Britain, who is just as bad. What makes it good food? Well, that's what makes it good food, though. Our Chinese food isn't really Chinese food. It's like an American Chinese food. It's great. We have the same Chinese food. Yeah. This, is the, this is the thing. I, I'm terrified by that. Uh, and, and England, exactly, as Renee puts, England brings in some great imported curries. <laughs> well, we don't uh, have Indians I, here in the US. I mean, yeah, no, <laughs> gotta, no, but ours are, ours are clearly better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm happens when you colonize. A, when you have a colony of people, and they start moving to your country. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't colonize India, so our influence is a little less intense. But let's not go down that road. Oh, All yeah. right, let's go down. Let's, let's go on to a strange conversation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. So, any other questions of significance that people have? <laughs> uh, it, does, it doesn't look like much this week because everyone's now going off on a rant about food. And I think what it, well, it's about dinner time, so we're all kind of getting hungry, so that's probably what that's about. Uh, well, maybe in your thing, for some of us, we're getting sleepy. But uh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, in which case, on that bombshell, um, oh, hang on, no, sorry. George has asked a question. What's the average flight of speed of the African swallow? Uh, Fast. Okay. Yeah. Actually, yeah. we do have a real question. Oh, uh, sorry, Gmo Taggy's asked if I'll wear a tie next week. Oh, come on. Let's go to real questions. Chronix, why do you think Microsoft is taking so long to include dual core and LTE before quad core comes out? Uh, I mean, there's a couple of reasons here. Uh, I think for support dual core, the OS needs to do it. Uh, that's an OS level thing. And that's not trivial to go back and take advantage of that, like multi threading and stuff. Yeah. And the question, oh, you know, sorry, there's multi partly there's threading now. Not necessarily in terms of cores, but at a, at a software thread level, that does exist. Yeah, uh, you know, Raphael says battery life. Uh, this is the big thing, right? Uh, mm. Windows Phone technically doesn't need dual core, and I, we all say that. And I, this could be dem demonstrated by I have the radar, which is a gigahertz, versus the Titan, which is one point five gigahertz, versus the Focus, which is one point four. I'm going to be flat out. I'm going to tell you, there's barely any difference between them. I'm sure technically there is. I'm not saying it's you know placebo but when launching daily apps and your email doing all this the titan is doesn't feel like leaps and bounds faster than the radar it's only because the os is so fast as it is so i i and i've said this before i think the titan could have gone with a lower battery uh lower cpu and got a better battery life uh and there's no difference between the, the focus s and the titan as far as performance so i think if you benchmark them you'll see the difference of course but in real terms, there isn't. So what does dual core get you right now in a Windows Phone experience? I, I don't see much. You can make arguments for background downloading, uh, you know, processing data. I think the biggest one would probably be an Internet Explorer with multiple tabs and processes there. But I just don't see it as a priority. Android needs it as for dual core and quad core because it's the only way they can get their OS to perform you know, reasonably well. That's just a sad fact. So. 
Mm. And uh, actually, it's interesting. So, Shotgun has just said in the uh, thing that dual core is for sixty frames per second games. Well, no, not necessarily. We already have that for one point the one point five one point four gigahertz processors on yeah. the second gen devices can do sixty frames per second. Yeah, right. So, yeah. battery life might improve if the clocks were low and you're running, you know, you're running two logical cores at a, at a lower frequency. But that's about it, as we've said. But if you know, Microsoft can go back. Microsoft can make it even better if they start again. Um, so I think, I think that's why, um, we also got another uh, question. Uh, someone was asking, I think was it Brad Forster was asking, uh, about VPNs on the phone. Um, for those of you that I'm guessing he means, uh, the virtual private network. I can't imagine any kind of support coming to windows phone for some time. I don't think it's a priority. Uh, once no, again, still I can't focus on consumer features. Uh, VPN is nice. It's, but these are, these are niche editions and, and don't get me wrong they knew they do need to look at niche things mm-hmm. for the operating system at some point i think they're going they're starting to able to actually do that a little bit more but they obviously have some other main features that they want to roll out like for instance okay vpn if and you have to think from their perspective you can only do so much in these updates and what would you rather deliver on like say a vpn update or perhaps better xbox integration you know uh I'm not saying that is the choice. I'm saying, no, they do have to make those choices. And so they have to choose what they can and can't do for these updates. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a fortunate time is finite, though. Resources are finite. So Yeah, I think, I think in niche areas as well, we should be looking more towards the hardware encryption aspects so they can get into, seriously into business and into enterprise. Um, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's where they'll go next. Um, I think that's it for questions. Uh, yep, that yeah. is it. Uh, <laughs> should we flip a coin see who takes it away <laughs> yeah you can do it I do liked it. Your, uh, yours last week it was really fast and, you know, it's it's really fast like oh, I'll, I'll go slowly this week then just to stop <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone for listening uh, you can find us all on Twitter at WP Central you can find Dan uh, when he's slagging off British food uh, at Malatesta 77 <laughs> you can find George who's asking questions about birds at Coppertop 004 you can find Rich Edmonds who being British and backing me up that British food is awesome at Rich Edmonds and you can find myself generally ranting like I am now at JAYT Bennett uh, you can find Paul, our games editor, at SegaCon. And new edition, of course, you can find uh, Rafael Riviera. I think it's Rivera, maybe, uh, within Rafael. Uh, again, you can, if you can't spell these or are not too sure, look at the bottom of the podcast article. You'll find all the links down there. Uh, this has been the Mobile Nations podcast. Please go to mobilenations.com for more great shows covering everything mobile. Uh, and we want to say thank you to the WP Central store for sponsoring the podcast. You can go along there and find yourself some accessories and or some uh, new articles, charges, batteries, whatever you like for your phone. And of course, a thanks to, our, to the great artists who make the music for our podcast. Again, you can find more information at the bottom of this post. Uh, thank you, everybody. And oh, Renee's asked me to mention the at Mobile Nations for Twitter as well. Uh, and thank you, of course, to those of you who's joined us in the chat room. It makes a big difference to our podcast that we get to a bit of chat and banter with you guys. Daniel, anything to say? That's it. Take care, everybody.